This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. That wonderful TV year, 1977. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, first off, we made it to 100 episodes! Woo-hoo! That's our party. Yeah, exactly. So, I mentioned recently that I collected TV Guide Fall preview issues over the years and thought it would be fun to talk about which shows made it, which didn't, and which ones we actually watched. Yes. Now, I have to give credit to Ken Reed's TV Guidance Counselor podcast for this idea. He apparently has an enormous number of TV uh, TV guides, and his concept is he brings in this other person, generally a comedian, and they pick an old TV guide issue and then talk about what they would have watched. Yes. So, uh, so 1977. This is a year when Star Wars came out, but it came out too late to actually impact much at all. Yes. In, in television. Mm-hmm. The next year, big time. So we start with Saturday Night and Operation Petticoat which now, was on for one year. Was that like a military show or something where there were like nurses? Exactly. And, okay. and, and it was based on a movie, but the TV show was an early role for Jamie Lee Curtis. Wasn't her dad in the movie? Uh, I believe he Tony was. Curtis? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was also We've Got Each Other which was on for three whole months, and it is so generic. <laughs> no, that was on our own. Uh, you wouldn't know the difference. I, it's <laughs> We've got each other. <laughs> uh, boy, I don't even recognize those people. <laughs> which is why it was only on for three months. Oliver Clark and Betty Archer? <laughs> Household names. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but then we move on to something that went slightly longer. The Love the Boat. The Love Boat. <laughs> All right. I watched The Love Boat. Yeah, I well, no question. Yeah. That, that was that was standard viewing. No no question in my mind. Uh-huh. And it's actually available now on, if you get MeTV, I think they show it on the weekends. The only trouble is the syndication package doesn't include the whole series. Yeah, it stops after like the third season. You never get anything without Julie. Right. And I think what happened was they started doing musical numbers and they don't want to pay for the rights. Oh, <laughs> Because okay. that was when, like the last season is when we got the the, 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 the dancing girls. Yeah, with, um, with Terry Hatcher. Terry was Hatcher, in it. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Early role for her. Moving on to Sunday. On our own. It lasted a year. Yeah. Another incredibly generic series. I don't even Just remember Just a sitcom. That. Yeah. <laughs> Monday night, we had the Betty White Show, which lasted five months. It was her playing the role of an actress on a TV show that kind of parodied Police Woman. They should they should show reruns of that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh. we, we then had Rafferty, which was on for three whole months, and featured Patrick McGowan as a doctor. Uh, eh. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Generic doctor type yeah. thing. We had the San Pedro Beach Bums also lasted for three months. So even back then, things didn't last very long. No, no. It was especially shows like this. It was like, okay, you know, yeah. we're, we're giving up. Now, that I do want to note here is that back in the 70s, you didn't get like a four-episode commitment. You got at least a 13-episode commitment. So all of these shows should have 13 episodes. Well... Somewhere. Or maybe they got. Destroyed. Maybe they got. Yeah. Uh, they didn't actually produce them. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But they had a commitment that they would actually, you know, <laughs> get paid. Get paid for yeah. the thirteen. So. So we also have young Dan O'Boone. Well, that one wasn't whole month. Fess Parker, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it was no, Fess no. Parker was the original one. Yeah. So this, this one, is... people you've never heard of and would never okay. hear of again. All right. <laughs> Then finally on Monday night we have Lucan, 1.5 years, a year and a half, about a kid raised by wolves. That's vaguely familiar <laughs> to me, but I don't think he I. He had glowing I eyes or something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of supernaturally uh-huh. type thing. 
Well, there's a lot of shows that uh, came in on Tuesday night in 77, starting with Soap. Soap. Which, which lasted yeah. for four years. Very popular. A hugely popular show, a parody of soap operas, although mm -hmm. frankly near the end it almost became a soap opera of its own. Oh, yes. Because it got actually dramatic and a character was killed off yeah. and da da da. Yeah. But, um, so there you go. Lou Grant. Five years. Dramatic so, spinoff of Mary Tyler Moore. Yes, so this was the first time you took a character from a sitcom, moved him to a one-hour drama, and so he moved from being being working at WJM to he moved to Los Angeles, and he was ran... Was a newspaper editor. editor. Yeah. Right. And as we learned at the Emmys, it was the first time that someone had won an Emmy for playing the same character in both a comedy and a drama. Yep. Then we had the Richard Pryor show lasted one month. Very controversial show, but it was an early role for Robin Williams. Pre uh, Mork and Mindy. Yes, and Tim Reed. Yes. Pre WKRP. Mm -hmm. The Fitzpatrick's five months. An early role for Helen Hunt. Was she like a, a little kid on this? Yep. yep. Oh. And not even, I think, in the main cast. Oh, okay. <laughs> And finally, for Tuesday night, Mulligan Stew. Three months. The big thing here was there were three people, actors, who were TV kids. Mm -hmm. Eleanor Donahue, Johnny Whitaker, and Suzanne Croft. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Johnny Whitaker was a family affair. Suzanne Croft was Partridge family. family. Yeah. Wednesday night, the Oregon Trail. Lasted two months, and it's pretty much what you think it is. It's them. The prequel to the video game? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. What the video game is based on, the Oregon Trail. <laughs> we have then Big Hawaii, an early primetime soap that lasted two months. Uh, a, a prequel to Hawaii 5 0? No, I don't know. no, I don't know. <laughs> Thursday night, Carter Country, which lasted two years. So this was a sitcom about a. Northerner who goes down and works in this small town southern um, police station. Okay. And uh, and the Carter country is referring to Jimmy Carter. It's ah, Carter country. Ah, okay. Okay. We have then Chips. I watched Chips, yes. <laughs> Six I years. Did. Which, of course, introduced Eric Estrada to the world. Yes, the California Highway Patrol. Oh. <laughs> Then we had Man from Atlantis. Okay, I watched Man from Atlantis. As did I. One year, uh, and of course, introduced Patrick Duffy with the webbed hands and the swimming like a dolphin. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rosetti and Ryan, which sounds like a USA show from today, yes. but it, and it was a law drama, which uh -huh. lasted two months. Okay. Red Fox Comedy Hours lasted five months. Was so, this after Sanford and Sons? Well, technically, yes. Okay. <laughs> but this was Red doing a variety show. Mm -hmm. And it was very generic. And it didn't last very long. We had then James at 15, a one-year show. Well, it couldn't last more than a year because then he would be 16. Well, then they, they renamed it at one point James at 16. And it was a realistic teen drama, which actually got a lot of critical praise. Yes, I vaguely remember it. Then finally, Friday night, now that Red Fox has moved on, it's The Sanford Arms, a spin-out without Red Fox. Okay. <laughs> and I think Luanda Page was the star of the show on Esther. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it lasted a whole month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And finally, Logan's Run, in the grand tradition of movie turned into TV show. And failing. And failing miserably. It lasted six months, but it was an early role for Gregory Harrison, who then later, later went on to Trapper John, M.D. Okay, and as I'm paging through here, I'm seeing, like, big, long articles about, say, the um, mini series, what you would call a mini series, or, um, you know, a network special kind of thing. Right. And, yeah, specials. And then they even have a section on what's changing on the news. <laughs> Isn't that odd? There was so little stuff on television, you could actually cover everything. ABC News plans close-ups on teenage alcoholism, Vietnam veterans today, and the volunteer army, and a January documentary on hostages and terrorism. Mm. You know, you couldn't do that now because they do so much of this stuff that's just, you know, like, 
what's happening now. Right. You know? Right. Maybe that's just the result of the 24-hour news cycle. I think that's fine. Oh, yeah. So this is our first shot at uh, fall TV preview issue episodes. We might do more in the future. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll... Uh, I'll pick out, like, uh, my favorite year, huh? Yeah, huh? yeah. And in the meantime, you can check out our audio podcast on I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching for 100 episodes. Yay!